Hello everyone, my name is Tom and welcome to this tutorial on programming with processing. So this is a beginner's tutorial and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting with the very fundamentals of programming and we're going to work our way all the way up till we've created a game. And that last game is going to, it's going to span a couple lessons and we're going to do it together so we're going to go line by line until the entire game is complete. Uh, but throughout the tutorials, you're going to get snippets of code and, and little things that will let you kind of create your own visualizations and different graphics and different uh, interactive programs with processing. All right. So starting at the beginning, it's going to be very basic. So I'm assuming that you have you've never programmed before, but you are computer literate. So you might have done some stuff with HTML or some type of website stuff. But even if you haven't, you'll you'll be just fine. If you do happen to have some coding experience, I, I recommend maybe skipping forward a couple lessons till you find something that's a little bit more your pace. Alright, so the first thing we need to do though is download processing. So go ahead and go to processing.org and on that page you're going to find this, this link, download processing. Go ahead and click on that and you can donate if you'd like and then go ahead and download. Uh, what you're going to find when you download this program is you're going to get a folder that looks like this and it's going to come inside this zip and it's not a nice install executable or anything like that where it's going to put a, an icon on your toolbar or an icon in your start menu or anything so we've actually got to make that ourselves so when you get this unzip it and I've created a shortcut already you can do that by right clicking here and going to create shortcut and then you can take this shortcut and you can put it on your toolbar or you can put it in the start menu or put it where wherever is most convenient for you. Uh, the next thing you're going to notice is is some of my files have these .exe, .txt in it and yours might as well if you've turned off hide file extensions for known file types. And this is a Windows, this is really a Windows only thing. I think on Linux and on Mac you're going to see all your file extensions anyways. So if you don't see these extensions, that's something we want to change because later on when we do other tutorials, you're going to want to be able to see these file extensions. And, and I also think it's just a, a good idea in general because it kind of gives you a little more idea of what's going on in your computer and what different files. Uh, if you want to look up different files, you, you know what the extension is to look it up by. So to do that, go to Organize and Folder and Search Options. And under here, under view, uh, you're going to see this hide extensions for known file types. And notice if I click this, my .exe and .txt all go away. If I unclick it, they all come back. So you want to keep it unclicked. You might also just, uh, just you know, for your own benefit, click on this show hidden files, folders, and drives. And that way it'll let you see your system files and other things. So if you ever need to find something in like your Windows system folder or something like that. It's, it's a lot easier to do. All right, so go ahead and click apply. Okay. All right, so just to recap, we downloaded processing. You've created a shortcut, put it either on the desktop or on the toolbar, and you've changed your, your uh, Windows Explorer so that you can see file extensions. All right, and now we're ready to actually do some coding with processing. So let's open up processing. Uh, when you open it up, you're going to get this. All right, so what exactly is this, and how do you make things with it? Well, processing is what's called an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. And the integrated part is because it has these three things, these three main areas, really. Uh, one, it lets you, you know, type code in, so type code here. And you're going to write all your code in this window and other windows that we're going to add on by clicking New Tab. The second thing it does is it will take this code, or well, it won't take this, it'll give me an error technically on this, but it will take the code that we're going to write in a, in a minute, and it will take it and it will make it something that the computer can actually run. And that's called compiling. All right, so we have... We have first we have the the coding, and then we have the compiling, and the last thing is is if it, when it tries to compile my code, there's an error of some sort, it'll help me debug that code. Uh, so debugging is 
It's just really what it sounds like. It's to get rid of the bugs in, in a program. And so if there's a, if I'm missing, like maybe I spelled something wrong or maybe I didn't put a semicolon or I have some brackets or some things like that that are in the wrong place, it's gonna tell me where the error is and it's gonna do its best to try to tell me how to fix that error. So those are the three main things that, that an IDE does. It lets you write code, it helps you compile the code, helps you debug the code. And there are a lot of other IDEs out there uh, that are used professionally, things like Visual Studio and Mono Developed and the whole JetBrains series. And these are those are all professional IDEs and they cover a lot of stuff. Well, the processing IDE is about as bare bones and as simple as you can get. Really, it just has these windows for, for coding, has a few buttons up here, very small menu, and the debugging, while it's okay, it's really not amazing. So, but for our purposes, it is perfect. Uh, so what we're going to do first is, is not just create a, a simple program and I'm not expecting you to actually understand what this program is doing. Um, you just need to copy it to make sure that your processing environment is set up correctly. So go ahead and do void setup and inside this type size and I'm going to say 500 by 500. So you should copy that exactly and once you have that done, click the run button. And what should happen is this window should pop up. And this window is 500 by 500 pixels. So yes, 500 and 500 here. Now if this didn't come up for some reason, and in this lower part down here that you, you saw a bunch of errors or things pop up, it's possible that you, do, you don't have Java installed, or maybe it's a really old version of Java, or there's some type of corrupted files. Uh, in the processing zip you downloaded or anything like that. So first just check what the errors say and if it's something about Java, try to update your Java and if it's something something else, maybe try to re-download the processing environment. If you're still having problems with it, just leave comments in the YouTube comment section and I'll try to get back to you. Okay, so just to recap what we've done, we've downloaded this, we've uh, opened up processing, we've wrote this very short program we don't know what this really what this means yet, and we're going to talk about it in detail in the next lesson. Okay, so remember this is the integrated development environment. What I did when I clicked this run was compile the program. Okay, and there's no errors, so I didn't have to debug anything. And if you need these these keywords and these these this vocabulary that I'm using, you can look on my website, and there's a little bit extra supplementary material on that. So you don't have to, don't try to memorize everything, just just kind of follow it along as best you can and you can go back and, and look at the website and, and look for the notes and things like that. All right, uh, so in the next lesson, we're gonna talk about this and we're gonna get some stuff drawing on the screen. All right, I'll see you then.